Okay, this is a problem about finding modular inverses. Uh, and we're going to do that by observation in this problem. And later we'll learn a fancier way to do it. But first, a disclaimer, I'm going to be talking through a lot of mods very fast. And sometimes I will probably say something and you'll be like, wait, why is that true? And you'll want to just keep watching the video, but please don't do that. Please pause and think about why some mod I said was true. And if you're very confused, I will link a couple mod videos in the description that kind of go back over more basic modular arithmetic. Please watch those. Please spend time. Mod is so weird. It hurts all my brain. And yeah, like please, please do that. Okay, moving on. What is modular inverse? So if I want the inverse of A under some mod B, what that means is I want to take this integer A and find another integer that I can multiply A by so that this value is equivalent to 1 mod B. That other integer we call A inverse. And again, there will be no fractions involved in this process. We are in mod land. The inverse will be an integer. So getting started with that, A is straight up looking for 5's inverse, right? Because 5 times 5's inverse will be equivalent to 1 mod 9. So how do we find that by observation? Well, you could just stare at it and think about it for a while, how whatever works. What I like to do is I know <laughs> that the inverse will be a small number because they're asking us to find it by observation. So I just try different small positive integers until I find one that works. So I usually start at one and see, okay, could one be five's inverse? Well, let's see, five times one equals five. That is equivalent to five mod nine. Okay. One's a no-go. Let's try two. Five times two equals 10. Oh, hey, that's equivalent to one mod nine. Wow, we're, we're done. The inverse of five is two. So the x that satisfies this, or an x, is two, because five times two equals 10, which is equivalent to one mod nine. That's, that's it. Looking at part B, the X in part B will not be three's inverse because we need X times three to be equivalent to five. So this is different than part A, but we will still use the inverse. Or maybe you just looked at this problem and tried different X's until you got something that was equivalent to five. That also works, but in the spirit of this problem, I'm gonna find the inverse. So, what I want to do when finding the inverse, or I guess the goal, I mean, is when I find the inverse of three and multiply it, it will become equivalent to one. And so I'll be left with one times X on the left-hand side, which will be super nice. The thing that allows me to do that is I need to multiply the right-hand side by the inverse of three also to keep them equal. So here's, kind of the formula for what I want to do, and it rests on finding three inverse. So we need to find a number that multiplies by three to be equivalent to one mod seven. And we just go for it. Three times one equals three. That's equivalent to three mod seven. So that's a nope. Three times two equals six. That's just equivalent to six mod seven. 3 times 3 equals 9. That's equivalent to 2 mod 7. 3 times 4 equals 12. That's equivalent to 5 mod 7. Do you remember how I said that part where I was going to say a lot of mods, and if you got confused, you should pause the video to think about it? That would be right now. <laughs> OK. Trying the next inverse, 3 times 5 equals 15, which is equivalent to 1 mod 7. Look at that. 14 plus 1 is 15. 
Heck yeah. So we have found three's inverse. It is five. And with that fantastic, very useful knowledge, we will take five times three times X and oops, five times five mod seven. I ran out of space over there. Coming over here, simplifying a little bit, that's 15 times X equivalent to 25 mod seven. We know that 15 mod seven is one and we're just in mod seven world. So we can simplify the 15 to be one times X. And leave, we could leave the 25 and have our answer be X equals 25. That totally works. But it's not a great answer because there, there's a smaller number that is equivalent to 25 mod seven. And that would be four because 21 plus four is 25. So 25 mod seven is equivalent to four mod seven. So X equals four works as a solution for B. We can check that solution by taking three times four equals 12 and that is equivalent to five mod seven. Fantastic, looking great. Okay, last problem. We need to find the inverse of four mod eight. So we try four times one equals four. That's equivalent to four mod eight. Four times two equals eight. That's equivalent to zero mod eight. Four times three equals 12. That's equivalent to four mod eight. Four times four equals 16. That's equivalent to zero mod eight. Hold up. So very unfortunately, this pattern will just keep repeating. Every number we multiply four by will either be zero mod eight or it will be four mod eight. We will never get to one mod eight. We will not get there. The inverse does not exist. Very tragic. It's even more tragic is that we wanted to try to find some X where we multiplied four by X and we got that equivalent to two. Do you see any twos? This list is zero, four, zero, four, zero, four. There's nothing we can multiply four by that would be zero or that would be two mod eight. Like this X also does not exist. That's different than the inverse not existing. The inverse doesn't exist because we can't get to one mod eight. The answer to C doesn't exist because we can't get to two mod eight either. So that's fun. That means we're done. But I feel obligated <laughs> to mention the general reason why there isn't an inverse in part C. And there isn't an inverse when this number and this number have share a common divisor. As in, there is some integer that divides evenly into both numbers. For example, in this case, two divides into both of these numbers. And if you want, you could try to find an inverse and you would end up with a repeating pattern of mods and you would never get to one mod six. This inverse does not exist. So four and eight share common divisors. So they don't work, but something like five and nine, they don't share any common divisors other than one. Um, so we can find an inverse there or three and seven, no common divisors other than one. So also you can find an inverse for those. So that was why A and B worked, but C didn't. Uh, and like I said, stay tuned for something called the extended Euclidean algorithm that will be about finding larger inverses when it would be really a pain to just try a bunch of numbers until we found it.